Okay, this video is on the quadratic formula, the cubic formula, the quartic formula, and the quintic formula, or non-existence of them. Do these things exist? So when, you're, when you take Algebra 1 in high school, um, we try to solve this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and everybody knows the quadratic formula. If you wake me up in the middle of the night and say, what's the quadratic formula? I'm gonna say x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Everybody learns that. But then what about the cubic formula? When you get into algebra two, you, you learn synthetic division and polynomial division and it's all hard and you're like, why don't they just teach us the cubic formula? Well, there is a cubic formula. So we can just go to Wolfram Alpha and just type in uh, solve ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero. And it's this, it's this, you know, there's three solutions and, and there's a lot of terms. So, you know, we, we don't learn that because there's so many terms. And look, it even says A is not equal to zero because when A is zero, it's a quadratic equation. And now what about a fourth order equation where we have AX to the fourth? There's, it turns out there's a formula for that, but look how long this guy is. So many terms, oh my goodness, I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. That's why they don't teach us the fourth order uh, equation, the solution to the fourth order equation. Now, what about a fifth order equation? So we go to Wolfram Al Alpha, we say, ask it to solve a fifth order equation, and it doesn't do it. It gives us this, it doesn't know the answer. So does that just mean Wolfram Alpha doesn't know the answer? Does that mean it's an open mathematical question? It turns out there's a proof that there's no general formula for the fifth order equation. Fifth order or higher, there's no uh, equation. And you can learn that proof in, in college algebra or graduate school algebra where you study group theory and Galois theory where you can prove that. Um, but in any case, usually we don't solve polynomials this way. Usually we solve them numerically by using a bisection method. If you know the function is positive at one point and negative at, at another point, then you know it has to go through zero. So you use, use a numerical bisection technique or you can use if you know something about slope you can use something called the Newton method or the secant method to try to find where it crosses zero numerically now why would we care why do we care about this stuff because in computer graphics um, ray tracing gives us the best quality images when you're playing a video game or watching a computer graphics movie ray tracing models individual photons bouncing off and, and you have to intersect the path of the photon with a surface like say a sphere or something like that and you're solving a quadratic equation in that case and as the surfaces get higher and higher order you need to solve these higher and higher order uh, equations so there, there are, are real applications for these things and thank you very much